Now, neither Hinduism, Buddhism, nor Taoism can possibly be called religions in this sense. Because all three of them significantly lack the virtue of obedience. They do not conceive the Godhead as related to mankind or to the universe in a monarchical sense. For you see, there are various models of the universe which men have used from time to time. And the model which lies behind the Judeo-Christian tradition, if there really is such a thing, is a political model. It is based on, it is a kind of using the metaphor of the relation of an ancient Near Eastern monarch to his subjects. And he imposes his authority and his will upon his subjects from above by power, whether it be physical power or spiritual power. And so it is thus that in the, say, the Anglican Church, when the priest at morning prayer addresses the throne of grace, he says, Almighty and everlasting God, King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favor to behold our sovereign majesty Elizabeth the Queen and all the royal family. Now, what are these words? This is the language of court flattery. And the title King of Kings, as a title of God, was borrowed from the Persian emperors. The Cyrus of Persia, the Kyrios, hence Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy upon us, is a kind of image drawn from things earthly and applied to things heavenly. God as the monarch. And therefore, between the monarch and the subject, there is a certain essential difference of kind, what we might call an ontological difference, so that God is God, and all those creatures, whether angels or men, or other kinds of existence which God has created, are not God. There is this vast metaphysical gulf lying between the two domains. That gives us, as citizens of the United States, some problems. Because, as a citizen of the United States, you have believed, and do believe, that a republic is the best form of government. How can this be maintained if the government of the universe is a monarchy? For surely, in that case, a monarchy will be the best form of government. And many of the conflicts in our society arise from the fact that although we are running a republic, many of the members of this republic believe, or believe that they ought to believe, that the universe is a monarchy. And therefore, they are above all insistent upon obedience to law and order. If there should be democracy in the kingdom of God, that would seem to them the most subversive idea ever conceived. <laughs> now, I'm exaggerating the standpoint a little bit, just for effect, because there are some subtle modifications which one can introduce theologically, but I won't go into them at the moment. Now, there are at least two other models of the universe which have been highly influential in human history. One is dramatic, where God is not the skillful maker of the world, standing above it as its artificer and king, but where God is the actor of the world, as an actor of a stage play, the actor who is playing all the parts at once. And this is essentially the Hindu model of the universe. Everybody is God in a mask. And of course, as you know, the, our own word, person, is from the Latin per sona, that through which comes sound. And this word was used 
for the masks worn by actors in the Greco-Roman theatre, which being an open-air theatre required a projection of the voice, so the actors wore masks with megaphonic mouths. And so the word person has, however, in the course of time, come to mean the real you. There was a very serious mistake made in translation from Greek to Latin when uh, one began to talk about the three persons of the Holy Trinity. The three masks of God wasn't quite the right idea because the Greek word was hypostasis, not a word prosopon, which would have meant properly translated person. Hypostasis is a very difficult word to translate. You could say that ice, water, and steam were three hypostases of the same thing. And that would be a little better analogy, not too good. But in Hindu thought, every individual as a person is a mask, but fundamentally a mask of the Godhead. A mask of a Godhead who, although the actor behind all parts the player of all games, is indefinable for the same reason that you can't bite your own teeth. For the same reason that you can't look straight into your own eyes. You can never get at it because it's the middle of everything. The circle whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. Then a third model of the universe which is characteristically Chinese, is that the world is an organism. And a world which is an organism has no boss. Even no actor. Because you see, in any organism, there isn't really a boss or top organ. We are accustomed, of course, in our culture, to think of our heads as ruling the rest of the body. But there could well be an argument about this. I'm going to put up a case that the stomach is chief. Because the stomach, uh, the sort of alimentary tract with a digesting process in it, is surely anterior to brains. Uh, there may be some sort of rudimentary nervous system attached to a stomach organization. But it's the, the, the more primitive you get, the more you get a little creature that eats. See? It's a sort of tube. And in go things at one end and out the other. And that, because that wears the tube out, the tube finds means of reproducing itself to make more tubes. So that this process of in and out can be kept up. But in the course of evolution, at one end of the tube is developed a ganglion, which eventually develops... Uh, eyes and ears, and has a brain in it. The better to scrounge around for food. <laughs> and so the stomach point of view is that the brain is the servant of the stomach to help it scrounge around for food. But the other argument is this. True, the brain is a later development than the alimentary tract. But the alimentary tract is to the brain, as John the Baptist to Jesus Christ, the forerunner of the big event. And the reason for all the scrounging around and uh, stomach and stuff is eventually to evolve a brain. And man shall eventually live primarily for the concerns of the brain, that is, for art and science and all forms of culture, and the stomach shall be servant. 